matchless God because he's worthy. Listen to the angels. Listen to the angels cry of holy. songs from a lot, a lot a lot of years ago but he's holy uh, welcome we are doing something different today because of holy week an observation of holy week we are doing um, something different we're just walking through um, holy week and so today is friday as we know good friday today is good friday And um, we all know that that today's events in Holy Week are today's events in Holy Week was uh, Jesus's trial and his sentencing, um, the crucifixion, his death, and his burial. So let's pray and um, and uh, share a little bit, and then reflect a little bit, and then reflect. I'm gonna pull up my notes from Wednesday, and then we'll get started. Amen. Now let's pray. Father, thank you for this day that you've made. Lord, we thank you for breathing life into us. Lord, we repent of our sins and ask that you would forgive us. 
particularly as we reflect on this day, this day, not the exact number day, maybe not even the exact month, but the commemoration of the day, Good Friday. We repent of our sins and we ask that you cleanse us of unrighteousness, Lord Jesus. You know, God, our eyes, ears, and our hearts are open to see, hear, Lord Jesus, and receive whatever it is that you impress upon us. We give you thanks, O oh Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hope you can hear me well. Hope you can see. Hope you can see me well. Um, so just as a, as, a, as a quick recap, uh, and a very very quick recap, and a very very quick recap. I pull up my notes; they disappeared on me. So we've gone through Palm Sunday. We've gone through. Uh, Jesus enters into Jerusalem to Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Uh, then we've gone through Holy Monday. The commercialization of the church, of the temple. Jesus uh, cleans out the temple. He also debates, you know, the Pharisees. Okay. Still trying to give wisdom so that they can uh, live. Uh, and then uh, so they can live and just come to the real knowledge of who, of, of Christ and give their hearts to him. And then Tuesday, Holy Tuesday is when he curses the fig tree because it bears no fruit. And the question was, uh, that was for us, was have you, as followers of Jesus, it is our responsibility to bear fruit. And so the question becomes, have you, have we, bore any fruit or do we just look like we bear fruit because we know how to talk like we go to church because we know all the lingo we know all of the the jargon the mumbo jumbo <laughs> so that that was our question we looked apart um, and then I said, it is uh, also the day the plot against Jesus began to take real form. They had always, I'm sure, they had, they had always wanted to plot against him. But this is when it began to take some real, real, real form. Um, they debated how they would discredit him. Talked about how to bring him down. It's a public embarrassment. And then it was Holy Wednesday or Spy Wednesday. And when Judas decides that he's going to approach the Pharisees, he's going to approach the Pharisees and the religious leaders. He's going to approach them about betraying Jesus for 30 pieces of silver and 30 pieces of silver and when i and i did some research 30 pieces of silver would be equivalent i believe i said to 441 dollars today and i asked who would betray jesus for 30 pieces of silver and the easy answer was none of us that was the easy answer. I respect that. Sitting inside of the harp and bowl, right? Sitting or sitting, you know, when we're here in the mornings or we're in church on Sundays, no one would even fat. No one would fat betraying Jesus for four hundred and forty-one dollars. Most of us. Most of us, or a lot of us, make that amount of money in, in, a, in a day or two days 
I know a lot of us do. But the question I posed after that, because of course none of us would sitting inside of here um, in the morning would consider that. And the question was, what's your 30 pieces of silver? Because we all have a 30 pieces of silver. We all have a price. That price may not be money, but that price may be a lack of faith, lack of trust in God. What is what is what is what is what is your 30 pieces of silver? It's the thing we hold on to. Is it the thing we hold on to? On the, on the Watchmen's gathering last night, um, I think I heard Reverend Neal, correct me if I'm wrong, Reverend Neal. I heard, think I heard Reverend Neal say that um, the 30 pieces of silver was equivalent to the price of a slave. Did you say in the Old Testament, Reverend Neal, correct me if I'm wrong. $441. And I said, a question for Holy Wednesday was, or Smy Wednesday was, what is your 30 pieces of silver? 30 pieces of silver might be that friend that you won't give up for Jesus. It, it, it could be. 30 pieces of silver is anything that we won't fight. That is unlike God. 30 pieces of silver is anything that we won't do that God said do. 30 pieces of silver are things we do that God says don't do. It's 30 pieces of silver. And so yesterday, I was in service last night, and yesterday was Monday, Thursday, Holy Thursday, and that's the Last Supper, right? Last Supper and washing of disciples' feet. And um, and an important thing here is um, he tells the time he tells disciples, he says, "Hey." When I'm gone, you continue. You continue. You continue on. Do what? Do what? I've been doing. It's not the Great Commission, go out into the world and make disciples, but it was him commissioning them to continue his work. Continue his work. Um, it was also the day of the Garden of Gethsemane. One of the most important days. It 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 is it is it is so exceptionally important because that's the day he decided unequivocally that he would die. Not my will, but your will be done. That was Holy Thursday. So here we are, Good Friday. We love Good Friday. It's amazing that um, how much we love Good Friday. Because we all know what's coming out. But I sometimes feel like Good Friday speaks to our response to Good Friday. Can sometimes speak to the selfishness of us as followers of Jesus. Because Good Friday was good for us. It wasn't good for him. in the sense of the physical anguish and agony. And all we love to do year after year, 
year after year, year after year, is get happy. Is get happy about it. We, even as followers of Christ, can be so selfish and so self-centered. And so me, 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 what about me? What about me? So we get excited happy about Good Friday. When in reality, none of us would sign up to be crucified. None of us, I wanna really quickly pull this. Of what we wouldn't sign up for. I'm going to talk really quickly, just share a little bit. Of. I researched this, the anatomical and physiological details. Of six hours of pain and death by crucifixion. And, and, and. I just want to want to want to read this here. Just want to so we can get a description of Good Friday. Why we should be more somber, even knowing the result. But we should be a little. We we need to really be a little more somber when we think about the anatomical and physiological pain of a crucifixion. Just want to read some of this. Number one, it says, it is the most painful death ever invented by man. The most painful death ever invented. It was reserved primarily for the most vicious of male criminals. While we're getting happy, let's remember these things. While we're getting happy about Good Friday. I want us to remember these things. It was reserved primarily for the most vicious of male criminals. Jesus refused the anesthetic wine, which was offered to him. Right? The crucifixion guaranteed a horrific, slow, and painful death. It says, having been nailed to the cross, Jesus now had an impossible anatomical position to maintain. Knees flexed at about 45 degrees, forced to bear his own weight with his thigh muscles, which is not an anatomical position possible to maintain for more than a few minutes without severe cramping in the muscles of the thighs and the calves. While we're getting happy, let's just remember this. Let's remember some of this. Jesus' weight born on his feet with nails driven through them. Let's just remember, I just want us to remember. See what it says, it says, as the strength of, of Jesus's muscles uh, uh, tired in his lower limbs. The weight of his body had to be transferred to his wrists, his arms, and his shoulders. Within minutes, listen, within minutes of being placed on the cross, his shoulders were dislocated. Minutes later, his elbows and his wrists became dislocated. 
within minutes of hanging on the cross. Within minutes. So why are we getting happy? I want us to reflect. I'm not going to read it all. But I'll post it today. And you can read it all. It says here. After Jesus, his wrist, elbows, and shoulders were dislocated, the weight of his body on his upper limbs caused traction forces of his pectoralis major muscles of his chest wall. This caused his rib cage to be pulled upwards and outwards. The most unnatural state, his chest wall, permanently in a position of maximal respiratory inspiration. In order to exhale, Jesus was physiologically required to force his body. Let's, let's think about this. In order to breathe out, Six hours in order to breathe out, Jesus had to push down on the nails in his feet and raise his body and allow his rib cage to move downwards and inwards to expire air from his lungs. Good Friday. Good for us. It says here crucifixion is a medical catastrophe. It's not my words, I, I, I did a little research on this. Then it says this, um, the problem was that Jesus could not easily push down on the nails in his feet because the muscles of his legs bent at 45 degrees were extremely fatigued and severe cramp and in an anatomically com compromised position. And then it says this. It says, um, since we love movies like The Passion of the Christ, great movie. I love the movie too, right? Unlike all Hollywood movies about the crucifixion, the victim was extremely active. The crucified victim was physiologically forced to move up and down the cross. A distance of about 12 inches in order to breathe constantly. Good Friday. The process of respiration caused excruciating pain mixed with the absolute terror of suffocation. He was all God, he was all man. He felt every bit of this, he was not exempt from this. It says within minutes of being hung on the cross, he became short of breath. The constant movement would cause excruciating pain in his wrists, his feet, his dislocated elbows and shoulders. Good friend. It said the blood, he was covered in blood, sweat, tears, right? He got blood, sweat, tears, and it says the blood was a result of the scourging that nearly killed him and the sweat as a result of his violent involuntary attempts to effort to expire air from his lungs, involuntary effort to breathe. And throughout it all, he was completely naked and they were laughing at him and they were swimming. They were mocking him. All of this were being mocked. This is the riddle. Land. Good Friday. I'll post this later today so you can really get an understanding and, and read it on your own. Read it on your own. It gets worse. Good Friday. So when I asked the question, what's your 30 pieces of silver?
I want you to be reminded that he went through that so you wouldn't have to have 30 pieces of silver. So you wouldn't compromise your faith. So you wouldn't remain addicted to whatever it is. So you wouldn't continue on with whatever thing. So we would not continue on doing the things that he does not like. That 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 really do. So we would not continue to do the things that make his suffering in vain. He did that so we would not be party to or a part of the group that hailed him on Sunday and said crucify him on Thursday. Deal with the Barabbas. Deal, 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 deal with, not the Barabbas. Deal with the part of you that says, give me Barabbas. We all need to deal with the part of us that says, give me Barabbas. We all need to deal with the 30 pieces of silver in our life. I'm not saying that it's going to be easy. I'm saying that it has to be done. If Good Friday was good for you, it was good for me, but it wasn't. Good for him. It wasn't good for him at all. It was horrific. It was designed to be horrific and embarrassing. Embarrassing. And he was completely innocent. He tried to make a mockery of him. And so let's deal with the part of our lives that make a mockery of it. Because let me be very clear here. We all love to tell this story and get happy and we love to hear the things that happened to Jesus and associate ourselves. He was ridiculed. I'm ridiculed. He was talking about what Jesus, they talking about what Jesus was talking about. So you in good company if they're talking about you. Let me be very clear. We are more mocker than we are Jesus. Let's just be flat out clear. We are more mocker. We, we are more Ridiculer. We are the ones laughing as he sits on the cross. We, that's, that's who we identify with more. Let's, 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 let's get real, let's get really real and down to the nitty gritty, to the meat, to the meat of this thing to the bone, to the gristle of this thing. Stop trying 
to always identify yourself with Christ's suffering when we should more so, more times than not, identify ourselves with the soldiers who nailed him. We are more Pharisee than we are Jesus. But we, when we look at ourselves, And I understand that we have the benefit of knowing the end of the story. But those who really loved him, those who really, who his mother and the disciples, they all they all they had to hang on was his word. They destroy this temple, and in three days I'll raise it up. But 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 when they see the man that they love, the man that they have, the man that they have. Um, listened to and who have been taught by for three years. Can you imagine? There was no way in the world they thought, ah, you know what, we're going to be all right. You know how I know? Many of them weren't anywhere to be found during his crucifixion. Many of the, the great apostles, and they're great. So we need to identify more with the apostles behavior than we do Christ because many of them were nowhere to be found. The great apostle Peter, nowhere to be found because they didn't have the benefit of knowing the end. They know what they heard, but they were afraid for their lives because they could be next. Do we have the benefit of knowing that we won't be crucified to a cross. So is it Good Friday? I guess so. I guess you can say that. It's good for us only because we know the end of the story. And so reflect today. Lord, what in me, what part of my life says, give me Barabbas? What part of my life says, crucify me? What part of my life mocks his crucifixion? What part of my life is laughing at him as he hangs on the cross? What part of my life decides to be with the crowd? and not with Christ. On Good Friday. Yes, it's Good Friday. It is. But only because we know the end result. And that's what I want us to do. This time for celebration. We can even get celebrated about Saturday. Because he became a party crasher. He was a party crasher. You might never see that movie Wedding Crashers before. Jesus was a party crasher on Saturday. This time, there's time to get excited. There's time to celebrate. But don't you dare, don't you dare celebrate today. Today's not the day to celebrate. Even though you know the end result, today is not the day to celebrate. Today is a day of repentance and reflection, introspection, and deep in a deep dive to the ugliness of who we are so we can make sure that his crucifix, that his suffering, was not in vain. Father, we repent. Father, we repent.
again. Because when we read about what you went through, it's it's easy to say he was crucified, but when we read the details of your suffering, when we read the details, God, of your suffering, Lord Jesus, it brings it to the forefront. Talk oh God, we're so sorry, Lord, and we commit to dealing with the parts of us and mock you as you hung on that cross. We 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 commit to dealing with of us, God. Be to those who ridiculed you and spit on you and screamed crucify because we are they. We are the ones that say Hosanna in the highest and then crucify him, Lord God. So we repent and we ask that you forgive us. Please, Lord, I, I repent. I repent, God. deep reflection and not just deep reflection but correction God we thank you because even in your crucifixion Lord you don't even expect us to be perfect you don't even you don't even expect us you don't expect us to be perfect but you expect us to strive Expect us to strive to be more like you, God. God, we commit to doing that. So, Father, we call this Good Friday because we know the end of the story, Lord, but we're not going to ignore suffering. They try to embarrass you. They tried to send a message to others who were following you. They tried. So we're not just going to simply bypass and get all happy on Good Friday because it wasn't good for you in the physical sense. Wasn't good for you at all. It wasn't good for you at all. And it will be time to celebrate because we are so grateful. That tomorrow we commemorate you crashing the party, but we're not going to jump to tomorrow. We're going to sit right here on today and we're going to look in the mirror. The mirror moment. And we're going to think about the pain that you went through. We're going to govern ourselves accordingly. We give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise and God again we say thank you thank you thank you 
for what you did for us on that horrific Friday. And we won't be selfish and just think about how it benefited us. No, selfish like that. No, no. We will not be selfish. We thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen.